Hi, I'm Amanda Winley. This is a Mom's Guide to Cannabis. Today, we've got several videos for you that we think help you figure things out. Today, we're going to talk about edibles, what they are, how much to take, and what they can do to you. Edibles are food and beverages that have been infused with cannabis. That can either be the dried weed or oils and extracts. When you go to your dispensary and look at the edibles, there should be a sign on the package telling you how much THC there is per package. That's good information only if you know what a good starting dose is. I recommend trying between 5 and 10 milligrams of THC. Never take edibles on an empty stomach. Think of it like medication where the doctor says be sure to take with food. You don't want a six course meal, but you definitely want a little something in there to pad the way. Otherwise, the cannabis can upset your stomach. The high that you experience from edibles is different from the high you experience from smoking and vaping. Now, when you smoke and you vape, the THC goes into your lungs, directly into your bloodstream, and into your brain. When you do edibles, it passes through your digestive tract first. When that happens, your liver converts THC into 11-hydroxy-THC. 11-hydroxy-THC is THC with 11 more hydroxies than regular THC. I don't know, listen, it just feels a little different. You feel it more in your body and less in your head. An edible high can take up to two hours to start and will last anywhere from four to six hours. Now, if you feel your high coming on and it's a little too intense, Take some pure CBD oil drops and put them right under your tongue. It tempers the effects of the THC so it won't be as intense, but it will prolong it so it'll last a little longer. It's a trade-off. In my experience, the best edibles are the ones that kind of taste like crap. Those sweet, sugary little things usually won't even give you a buzz. So if your food tastes funky, you're probably on the right track. So remember, start with five to 10 milligrams. Be very patient. Stay safe and have fun. I'm Amanda Winley. This is a Mom's Guide to Cannabis. Hi, I'm Amanda Winley, and this is a Mom's Guide to Cannabis. Are you getting ready to do some baking? Let's talk about decarbing first. Decarboxylating, or decarbing as it's more commonly called by everyone, is when you use heat to activate the good stuff in cannabis to make it bioavailable. You see, THC is the fun chemical. There is no THC in raw cannabis. Instead, there's THCA, tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, or THCA. Heat turns that into regular old THC and everybody gets to have fun. But if it's not exposed to enough heat, you're not getting all the benefits of your weed. Now, you can just throw it in with your brownie mix and throw it in the oven, but you're really not getting your weed's maximum potential. So, there are many different ways to decarb. I'm going to tell you the easiest, least stinky one. First, preheat your oven to 240 degrees. Make sure you buy an oven thermometer. They're cheap and you'd be surprised how many commercial ovens are calibrated wrong. There is a huge discussion in the cannabis community about whether or not you should grind your weed finely before you decarb it. No, you shouldn't. It messes with terpenes and trichomes and, and just, just don't do it, okay? You do want to break it down into slightly smaller nuggets. Then what you're going to do is get a bell jar, which is one of those jars that people use when they make homemade jam. Put your weed in the jar and put the top on tightly. Put the jar in the oven. Then go do something fun for about 45 minutes to an hour. When you come back, the weed should have turned more brown and less green. That's how you know it worked. Take the jar out of the oven and allow it to cool completely before you open it. That's it. You're ready to bake. Stay safe and have fun. I'm Amanda Winley. This is a Mom's Guide to Cannabis. Meet Amanda, the stay-at-home mom. She just found out that some friends will be stopping by this evening. She wants to be a good hostess, so she decides to make them a batch of her famous mega brownies. Let's watch. First, she decarbs the weed. In a sealed jar, she bakes an eighth of cannabis in the oven at 240 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. When the bud is ready, it will look more greenish brown. You'll just have to trust us on this one. Next, it's time to make the canna oil. First, she needs to grind the weed into a powder. Make sure it's as finely ground as possible. It's the secret behind what makes her brownies pack that extra punch. 
She uses a regular old coffee grinder for that, but she's sure to keep it separate from the one she actually uses to grind coffee. She knows that once you grind cannabis in an electric grinder, you can never get that smell or taste out again. She measures out one third of a cup of oil and puts it in a small saucepan. Next, she adds her powdered cannabis, making sure the mixture is well blended. She knows she needs to keep the temperature of the oil between 160 and 200 degrees, so she sets the flame on low and uses her trusty meat thermometer to help her keep an eye on things. She allows the oil to simmer for 60 to 90 minutes as she distracts herself with her wifely duties. She grabs a box of her favorite brownie mix. In a large bowl, she combines the brownie mix, one cup of flour, one quarter cup of water, and one, two, count them three, three eggs. Let's stir that slightly, shall we? Now, it's time to add the can of oil. Ah, don't be shy. Put it all in. Waste not, want not. After some routine stirring, we wind up with a creamy concoction reminiscent of saltwater taffy from a state fair. In order to make her brownies a slightly more pleasant taste experience, she drops a heaping tablespoon of batter into a bowl filled with a confectioner's friend, powdered sugar. After rolling the blob in sugar and making sure it's evenly coated, she puts it into a module of one of our modern labor-saving marvels, a pre-greased mini muffin tin. Say, what happened to those gloves, missy? Once all of the cups are filled, it's time to put it in the oven. Amanda knows that cannabis starts to vaporize at 350 degrees, so she always makes sure her oven is set to 325. After 17 to 19 minutes, out comes the pan and voila, a perfect batch of mega brownies. After allowing the brownies to cool completely, she runs a knife around the outside of each module. A little wiggle, and out pops that brownie. But wait, don't throw those crumbs away. Amanda uses a spoon to scrape all the leftover crumbs up, storing them in a small container. Those sprinkles will be a big hit as a topping treat at your next ice cream social. After setting some aside for her guests, she puts a few brownies in a specially marked container into the refrigerating unit. The rest she stores in the deep freeze to prevent them from drying out. She thaws them in small batches, as she may need them. Now, because of the fine grinding she did, Amanda knows her brownies really pack a punch. She strongly recommends starting with a half of a brownie or even a quarter your first time. And then you can adjust the dose accordingly. Finally, when her friends come calling tonight, they'll see that Amanda truly is the hostess with the mostess. I'm Amanda Winley, this is a Mom's Guide to Cannabis. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate how much THC is in your homemade edibles. Now before we get started, I must warn you, there is math involved, so you might want to do this before you partake. I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible. Now a lot of people will encourage you to cook with shake. I prefer to use whole bud because then I can guess how much THC is in each brownie. So, let's get started. Step one, in one gram, there is 1,000 milligrams. So far so good, awesome. Put a pin in that, moving on. Step two, you're going to look up your strain in one of the apps like Allbud or WikiLeaf or Leafly to find out the approximate range of THC your strain usually has. For example, let's take Skywalker, personal favorite. It's a neat little indica that usually has between 14 and 17% THC. I average that out and call it 15%. So now we're going to take that 15% and apply it to our 1,000 milligrams. 15% of 1,000 milligrams is 150 milligrams. That means if you put one gram of Skywalker in your batter, you will have 150 milligrams of THC. You then go further and divide that by however many cookies, brownies, slices of cake you make, and that will tell you how much is in an individual slice. Just a reminder, we suggest starting with between eight and 10 milligrams. The only way to figure out the exact amount of THC in your edibles is to use one of those machines, which not a lot of people have on hand. Now, if your edibles turn out a little stronger than you bargained for, please watch our episode, What to Do If You've Smoked Too Much. That has some tips in it to help take the edge off and help you enjoy the rest of the ride. That's all I got for you. Stay safe and have fun. I'm Amanda Winley. This is a Mom's Guide to Cannabis. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're so inclined, we'd really love it if you'd subscribe and like the video. But more importantly, I want to hear about your baking adventures. Let me know in the comments. Today, we're going to talk about how to calculate 
that'll give you some great tips on what to do to help help get your head out of your ass, which I obviously do not have. Awesome. Put a pin in that, moving on. Awesome. Put a pin in that, moving on.